for me it's almost the end of the Camino. It's my day 20, 28 and I'm in Slavia. So here you can see. But oh, for many people it's the beginning of the Camino. So many people walk uh, from starting Slavia and they walk to Santiago. So the reason is because Slavia is just over 100 kilometers from Santiago, which is the required minimum for getting the Compostela. And yeah, I think now the route probably is gonna get quite busy. Uh, well, there are really many people with like with uh, walking from Saria. I think it's about 115 kilometers to, to Santiago. And well, there are again yellow arrows like anywhere else. And well, let's start the walk. Yeah, it's really misty, can't, can't see much. And well, hopefully late in the day it will clear up a little bit. The beautiful Galician forest that the, the region is famous for. Uh, pretty much on any, any Camino de Santiago, when you approach Santiago de Compostela, you go through through a forest like this. Well, I've walked 11 kilometers and it's time for a break. It's half of the day. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna drink a cup of coffee and uh, eat a sandwich. Sometimes on the Camino you see a stalls like this with some fruit and well, cakes and water. Uh, well, people put them, people who live on the way, they put it out for, and well, you can take whatever you want and you leave a donation. Mm. And good, what about? It's finally I reached the mark, which says a hundred, just over 100 kilometers left to Santiago. Oh, it's another place with a homemade food on the road. Well, what I think I've, I've stopped already three times to eat and then I just got some apples on the way from a, well, from a, like a local farmer or something. Uh, just before Puerto Marin, there are a couple of splits. So that's, I'm taking the, the red route. It's the original route, but there is one is a complementary route. It's a bit longer. Well, but I'm fine. I'm just gonna stick to to, to the historical route and yeah, continue walking. I'm entering the town, my destination for today, Puerto Marin, and wow, it looks really beautiful. There's a big river and a huge bridge, not really an old bridge, but just still impressive. And that's up there is the town, luckily it's not very big. Uh, well, tonight I'm staying in a guest house, uh, yeah, and I hope it won't be very difficult to find it. Exactly 22 kilometers, and well, I think my pension is somewhere just up the hill. Well, how lucky can you be to get a place right on the top of the mountain? <laughs> Here I am. This is a Paris a restaurant and a guest house. And well, tonight I'm staying in a private room. Super happy. Now this is my my room for Tonight it's it's a double room, but well, I'm only one person staying here, and uh, but it has a shared shower. It's not far. It's right here. Let's go down. So this is the shower and the toilet, and I think I shared just with with one more with another person. So it's not a big deal. And look at what what view I have from the window. Oh, it looks so cool. Check this. This is like an amazing view. Oh. Yeah, I'm so happy from, you know, from time to time I, I stay in uh, in private rooms because yeah, it's just the end and I've been walking for 20, 28 days. 
and yeah, I just think I've had enough all this albergues and shared rooms. So every every like third or fourth night, I I try to stay in a private if it's if it's not uh, too expensive and if there's anything available. But for this room, I'm paying twenty, I think twenty eight euro. Yeah, but well, I mean, obviously it's it's more expensive. It's more than double than you would pay for an albergue. But I'm really really happy just to have some privacy and <laughs> have a good sleep. The people uh, already left the, this place and then they just put left their backpacks for the delivery service so with envelopes and I guess you usually put uh, money in the envelopes so that they they can charge you for the delivery and then they come in the morning they take your backpacks and they put them in the car and they drive them to the next place where you're gonna stay so you can see right down the uh, the name here and uh, from where uh, where they pick it up, where they drop it off, and well, that and your phone number. That's pretty much it. Works really easy, and well, from what I've seen, that it works fine. Yeah, sometimes uh, your backpack might arrive later, after you like an hour or two later. But well, you just have to sit and wait there in, uh, in your place. Day 29 on of the Camino Frances, and I have three more days left before I'm in Santiago. You can see, well, I'm in Puerto Marin, just about to start my walk, but first I want to find a place to drink coffee and maybe eat something. And it's a really nice, beautiful morning. Not a single cloud in the sky. It's a little bit chilly in the morning, but yeah, I think later it will get nice and warm. If you want to get your Compostela from Sarion, you need two stamps a day. So one stamp you can get in your albergue on your hostel wherever you stay and the second stamp you can get in any bar on the way because well many bars most bars they have their own stamp so that's my first stop of the day breakfast I think I've eaten I don't know how many of these croissants for breakfast. Croissant in uh, what? Cappuccino, cafe con leche for breakfast. That's like a, the thing that I eat the most on the, on the on this Camino. At least. It's like there are really many people now coming by. I'm out of the crowd. The same was yesterday. You you start when you walk out of the town. There are really many people, but if you just walk a little bit faster after 30 minutes, well, everybody is gone. about halfway in the day. So I've walked 20 kilometers, well, 20, well, kilometers, sorry. I wish it was 12. And, well, I think I'm gonna stop for, for coffee, yeah. I always stop halfway. Uh, well, you can see the weather really changed. It was such a nice sunny morning and uh, it's really cloudy and it's quite chilly. Well, I hope it uh, doesn't start raining before I arrive. It's, this is my favorite part of the Camino in Galicia, when you get to walk through the forest. It's like enchanted forest. Almost done for the day. This is my town where I'm going to stay tonight, uh, Palace de Rey. And it was exactly 25 kilometers uh, from, from uh, Porto Marin. I can see the sign, it's uh, Albergue Sendoira. That's my place, so I guess it's somewhere this way. This is my albergue for tonight, and it's really cool. It's I think the most private albergue I've ever stayed on this Camino. It's really nice. I have like a curtain. Oh, this is my bed. I always get the top bed. Oh, I don't know. Bad luck. Oh, there is a plug here, 
and the, and the light. Oh, it's really it's really nice and cool. And the thing in the bathroom and the shower is inside here as well. Oh yeah, yeah, it has its own shower and then uh, and a toilet. morning, day 30 on the Camino Frances. Uh, today I'm walking to Arzua, which is about, I think, 28 or 30 kilometers. Yeah, from Baja Palace de Rey. And, uh, of course, the road is busy. Yeah, so today, tomorrow is my last day. Well, I'm actually quite excited because, well, it will be sad to finish the Camino, but it will be really nice to stop walking and yeah just to be able to stay for a couple of days in the same place because i think that's the the main tiresome thing on this on the walk that it's been 30 days moving every day from place to place walking yeah. well eight kilometers eight and a half kilometers uh, i think maybe i'll still i'll stay for, stop for coffee i haven't had my morning coffee yet of course, not forget to put a stamp. Mm -hmm. I was too lazy to put on rain poncho and it actually almost stopped raining. For some reason today, it feels really long. Now I've walked only 13 kilometers, but Honestly, it feels like I walked 20 or something. Now, and today is a 28 kilometer day. Yeah, I'm not doing halfway, yeah. Uh, I'm in, in Melide. It's a, well, it's a kind of a biggish town on the Camino Frances. And it's actually the second time I'm, I'm here. Well, the place is famous for, for pulpo. Uh, it is, it's a cooked octopus that is served with olive oil and salt. And uh, well, it's kind of early to eat pulpo, but I feel like I have to maybe stop here and yeah, yeah, just try a lot of pulpo. Wow, looks like this is a place to stop. I'm gonna just go and eat pulpo here if they have it. Buenos dias. Ah, tiene pulpo, sí? Uh, I ordered as well a pimientos de padrón. It's uh, green pepper uh, fried in olive oil and served with salt. So it's, it's typical for Galicia and the name comes from the town padrón. They're not spicy. Okay? They're good. They, they go really nice with beer. But I just ordered a Coke because, well, I still have 14 kilometers to go. I don't really want to, yeah, to drink beer before I finish. Here comes my pulpo. I asked uh, half of the portions. So usually the normal portions they're quite they're bigger. But yeah, it's it's already too much for me, I guess. So you can see that's that's the tentacles of of it's octopus octopus tentacles, and they they boiled first and then they well cut and fried a little bit and served with olive oil and and pepper and salt. Must say today is not a very easy walking day. It feels like I'm just going up and up all the time. I walked for 75 meters up, which is not that much, considering that I've walked 
almost 24 kilometers, but for some reason it feels like it was a lot of hot today. Today is uh, um, my 31st day on the Camino Frances and it's the last day for me. Well, I'm walking 40 kilometers from Arzuo to Santiago. And yeah, I started a little bit early, it was dark, so I just couldn't really film anything. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I guess I can get a stamp and maybe leave with some donation for the guy that's playing float. First time for the last day on the Camino. Hey, it's a cool, <laughs> cool donkey. And today is the first of, of October. Wow. Well, I got my first time for the day. And <laughs> I think I barely walked probably. Yeah, not even five kilometers yet. And still 35 kilometers to go. Oh, the good thing is the last day, so it's fine if I arrive late and tired, it doesn't matter. Buen camino. That's how they say, we're in front, I'm my friends actually. We've been walking, well, not together, but meeting every day, almost since the beginning of the Camino. And it's really nice to see them again. Look at you guys. Fast walkers! It's real, Alia, it's not there. Yeah, you walk fast with me. Wow, you know, to catch up with you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop here, guys. Way for the day. I'm in Upi and I still have 20 kilometers to go. Well, yeah, it was good so far, no rain. Well, a little bit ups and downs, but nothing really tested. Yeah, well, I feel strong. I think maybe four hours I will be in Santiago. Hey, hey, hey. I'm out of Upi So the second half of my of my walk. No, and I really like the part. There is a really beautiful forest part right after after the town. And then, well, oh, I can see my one more friend, Marianne. It's coming. <laughs> That's so nice. I actually met everybody today. Well, hopefully, I'll see them tomorrow. I know for, for many people, uh, they, it is exciting to arrive together uh, in Santiago, you know, because you walk a Camino with the same people for the whole month and then you want to share this excitement with someone. But well, for me, honestly, I feel like it's nice to walk uh, in Santiago, just last, last maybe 15, 10 kilometers on my own because I have, I really have time to think back and well, to, to remember uh, different things that happened on the, on the Camino and just to, you know, to digest the whole experience. And well, it is really nice actually to walk, to walk on your own. I must say the last 10 kilometers to the cathedral, uh, I don't know, it just always feels so long. Uh, it's not like a really, as I said, spectacular scenery. Like outskirts of the city. Well, and yeah, that pretty much it is. But that's it. Uh, this is the monument on, on top of Monte de Gozo. Well, we can't really see behind the trees, 
but Santiago is just down there. Oh, there you can see far away. Oh, the buildings. Yes, it still looks far. And I think it's about five kilometers from, from here, from Monte de Gossa to the cathedral. Yeah. And yeah, I just feel a little bit tired already. I've walked 35 kilometers. But, you know, it's just the last, last little bit, last effort, and that will be over. Uh, this is uh, the famous albergue for 400 people, Monte de Gozo. Uh, the one is just outside Santiago de Compostela. And, well, you can say this is like this small kind of houses. And there are really many of them. You can see usually we walk when we walk past. You don't see people at all, but now I can see there is now some somebody's laundry hanging out there and there is a there is a person walking, so there's a pilgrim there. Honestly, well for me I rather arrive in Santiago later than just stay five kilometers before the cathedral and then the next morning get up again in the morning and walk the last five kilometers. Well, the main actually problem for me that then you arrive early and the check-in is everywhere late and then you have to sit somewhere in Santiago and wait for your hotel or hostel to check in. And here it is, Santiago de Compostela. Unfortunately, I cannot see the cathedral from here. It is still, still like somewhere behind but it's not far anymore and well i cannot believe 31 days of walking is almost over here i am santiago de compostela well you can see some people leave their sticks and caps and shoes but i don't think i'm gonna leave anything oh. it's just really nice really really nice to be here again Almost there, I think maybe 400 meters or so to, to the cathedral. Uh, super exciting, isn't it? Well, this is it, almost it. So this is the cathedral. And well, I'm really lucky because I booked my room before, three weeks beforehand. And then I stay right here as the Hospitaria Seminario Mayor. They have special rooms for pilgrims, but I'm going to show it to you later. And this is it, this orange, and there's uh, someone playing Galician bagpipes. And this is like last 10 meters to get to the square. so many pilgrims and well this is a super beautiful cathedral of Santiago de Compostela oh well it's just time to finally put the backpack down sit down and just think yeah uh, I'm just looking around maybe I see some people that I, I met on the way time I arrived in Santiago and finally I well I managed to book ahead 
this the this place Hospedaria Mayor. I booked it three weeks before. Well, they have special rooms for pilgrims for 25 euro for a single room, and I think 30 or 35 uh, euro for a double room. First floor. Uh huh. Here I am. I'm really excited. I don't know what to expect, but I hope. Well, it just whatever. It's private, and that's the most important thing. 460. Well, uh huh. 440, 441. Well, I guess it's this way. 460. Ah, oh, this is right here. Da 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 da. Oh well. No, this is quite a. Like a basic thing, but yeah. So see, there's just a just one single bed. Well, small windows, but there. I think this should be. I don't know. Is it a closet or a toilet? Oh, this is a closet. Sorry. <laughs> it should be a toilet as well. Um. Is it right? Is it right? Yes. Well, this is a toilet and well, and a shower. Well, it's, it's, it's not fancy at all, as you can see, but, well, the location is amazing and, well, for 25 euro, uh, I don't think you can find much better place than this. And, yeah, by the way, a breakfast is included as well. Yeah. Well, uh... That's my uh, second day in Santiago de Compostela. I arrived yesterday and well, I moved to a different place and I think it's time to go and get my, my Compostela. Oh, well, from what I've heard, I think there are really many people have to go first and get a number. Well, and then maybe come back like an hour or two later and just wait in the queue. So to get the Compostela, you will need your <clears throat> credential with uh, with stamps and you will need an ID document so it can be a passport or for European citizens just an just an ID card. Well, the pilgrims' office is just five minutes walk from the cathedral. Well, that's pretty much where you get your ticket with number. My number is. Uh, 736 and currently they it's number 396 well I guess I can come back maybe I don't know when like tonight there is a website that you can uh, track your, the number and well you so you don't have to sit here for like four hours waiting you can I'm gonna go back to my hotel because it's just a uh, five minutes walk from here and well i'm gonna check online and maybe maybe we'll come back later after after lunch so i just uh you see with the with your ticket you get this qr uh, code and well you just if you have oh you can install a qr uh, scanner so which i just did and then well so you can see so the current number is 407 and well i think it's still maybe a couple of hours of waiting but it's really nice because with this with the scan i can just just from time to time check it online and yeah i don't have to sit and wait there i think it's it's time to go back to the pilgrim's office well you can see they, they asked to me to be there 30 minutes before and well it's like um about i i calculated it's about 50 numbers which is almost now so um, well, now I'm gonna go and hang out some a little bit at uh, the office waiting for, for my turn to get the Compostela. So I made the waiting and yeah, here is my, my Compostela. That's the one that you get for free. Well, it pretty much just says your name and, and I don't know, the date it was issued. Uh, it's not really much, it doesn't say anything else, but well, it doesn't matter. If you want more personalized one, you can pay 3 euro and get the certificate of distance. And by the way, it's my fifth Compostela. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs>